What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video and welcome back to part number 12 of the Not So Tiny Tiny House Build Series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I installed this lap siding. Pretty simple process, but I think I have some tips and tricks that might help you if this is your first time installing lap siding. So first of all, let's talk about some of the tools I used. And I guess before we do that, let's talk about the specific lap siding I used. So I went with LP Smart Side. This is not sponsored. That's just the product I thought was best for this build and the product that I thought would be easiest to work with. The other super popular choice in the kind of lap siding space is hardy plank. And hardy plank is a fiber cement material versus LP Smart Side being a wood material. It's kind of like an OSB. So because of that, I could use all of my standard kind of woodworking construction tools for cutting this product. Whereas with hardy plank, you'd need to get specialized blades for things like your miter saw and circular saw. And usually for cutting around penetrations like your electrical outlets and things like that, you'd use an angle grinder. So the cutting tools I used on this project were a miter saw, and I would highly recommend setting up your miter saw on some sort of miter saw stand with good infeed support, because these boards are pretty long. The smart side boards come in 16 foot lengths and hardy plank comes in 12 foot lengths, and both of them are fairly floppy, so having good infeed support is super, super helpful. In addition to the miter saw, I also use the circular saw and jigsaw a ton, again, for cutting around things like windows, doors, the electrical outlets, the electrical panel, all that kind of stuff. Some other tools I used quite a bit in the kind of layout category were a line laser or line level, which we use for checking the level between our trim boards. The line laser was also great for helping us kind of wrap around corners and go across trim boards, making sure all of those boards lined up across the entire house. Also a four or six foot long level is super useful for leveling the lap siding itself. It's also great for making vertical marks to show where your studs are so you can make sure you are nailing into the studs. Speaking of nailing, let's talk about some of the nailers I used next. Obviously, the big nailer here was the siding nailer. That's what I used to attach all of these boards. I used two and a quarter inch ring shank siding nails. I needed to add those every eight inches, so that ended up being a heck of a lot of nails. So it was really nice that those siding nails came on big coils, so I wasn't constantly having to reload that gun. As far as I'm aware, there are no battery powered siding nailers, so we did need to run a compressor and air hose, and I would highly recommend getting a good quality air hose. I used a polyurethane hose, they're way more flexible than the cheap hoses you might have gotten with your compressor. The other nailer we used quite a bit was a finish nailer, and this was a battery powered nailer. And that was for tacking boards in kind of areas where that siding nailer wouldn't fit. Also, as you'll see later, we tacked the corners of this lap siding to help secure those down to the house as well. And we used two and a half inch galvanized finish nails for that. Okay. So those are kind of the basics you need, but I would also recommend two more jigs, these gecko gauges, which were totally indispensable in my opinion, and this simple cider. So for the most part, that was pretty much all the tools we used. But one other thing I would definitely recommend is a good kind of walk board or scaffolding setup, because if you just have a typical ladder leaning against the wall of your house, it's gonna be very difficult to install that lap siding, trying to work around that ladder. All right, so with the tools out of the way, let's talk about the basic process of installing the lap siding. So first of all, we went around and measured the distance between our trim boards all the way around the house just to see what our longest boards were gonna need to be. And then with that number in mind, we went ahead and rough cut a board to length and then ripped some starter strips from that board at about an inch and a quarter wide. And these starter strips are gonna be the first thing you install along the very bottom of your sheathing. And that's gonna be what helps to kick out that first row of lap siding and make that kind of angle match the rest of the lap siding up the wall. Also, after we made any cuts on this product, we made sure to go ahead and prime those cut edges. And this is required by the manufacturer. Again, this is basically kind of like an OSB type product. So it's gonna be susceptible to absorbing moisture through any of those cut edges. The factory edges and the faces, this is not the final color, are already pre-primed, so you don't have to worry about those. But anywhere you make a cut, you need to go ahead and prime it or paint it. We used a rattle can primer and that made life super easy. Once we had some starter strips cut down, we went ahead and picked the first section we were gonna start with. And we decided on this front section on the house, mainly because it had nothing to work around, no windows, no outlets, so it was gonna be super simple. After picking our section, we went ahead and checked for level with the line laser, basically measuring off of the bottom of the trim boards. The bottom edge of those boards were perfectly level, so luckily we could use that as reference for our first row of lap siding. Next, we went ahead and cut our starter strip to length. And one thing to note on this LP Smart Side product, you need to leave a 3 16th of an inch gap on both ends of the board. So take your measurement and subtract 3 8 of an inch, and that's gonna be your final length. After cutting the starter strip to length at the miter saw, we went ahead and got it nailed up on the wall, again, using the siding nailer. And we just flushed up the bottom edge of the starter strip with the bottom edge of our wall. 
Next, we went ahead and marked out locations for chalk lines on this first wall. This slab siding that I went with is about eight inches tall, and we went with a seven inch reveal. And because of that, we marked up the wall in seven inch increments and then chalked lines across those marks. Also, the sheathing we used had the stud locations marked out on most of the face of the panels, but we extended those marks where we knew they'd get hidden after adding rows of lap siding. And again, we used that level to do that vertically, making sure that level was nice and plumb. Next, we can go ahead and get our first row installed. We went ahead and measured up the first basically two feet of the wall to see if we could cut multiple boards at the same length, which really helps with efficiency. And luckily our trim boards were pretty parallel, so we could go ahead and cut three boards at once. And that also allowed us to go ahead and prime all three of those ends at once, again, just making the process more efficient. So again, since the bottom edge of our trim boards were level with one another, we could go ahead and install that first row with the bottom edge even with the trim boards. And this is also where that simple cider jig came in handy so that we knew we had a nice even 3 16 of an inch gap on both ends of this first board. Again, because we have 24 inch on center spacing on the framing on this house, we had to add nails every eight inches. So basically on every stud and two nails between every stud. After getting that first row installed, things could start to move much quicker because now we could use those gecko gauges. So the way those work is they have this thin plate that slides up under your previous row of lap siding. And on the front of the gauges, they have this little arm that helps you lock the gauges into place. One thing we didn't notice here was that the instructions actually tell you not to crank all the way down on the arms. But since we missed that in the instructions, that ended up kind of spacing the gauges off of the face of that previous row. And so then the boards had a tendency to kind of slip behind the gauges. And that's just something to watch out for if this is your first time using those gauges. Also, you can set your reveal in quarter inch increments. And so we went ahead and set that seven inch reveal we were after. And after clamping down a gauge at both ends of that first row, we could set the next row in place and go ahead and get it nailed in place. And again, we had marked chalk lines on this first wall, so we could kind of use those just to make sure our gauges were working properly. But really, they're pretty much foolproof as long as you make sure they're butted up securely against the bottom edge of that previous row. And from there, it was really just rinse and repeat on this wall. And while we continue siding, let's take a second and talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Policy Genius. Policy Genius is America's leading online insurance marketplace, and they make comparing your existing policy against others super easy, ensuring you get the best possible price. In fact, Policy Genius has saved their customers an average of $1,000 per year on their home and auto insurance by reshopping, and revisiting your home and auto policies is super easy through Policy Genius's system. The process is simple, and after answering a few quick questions online about you and your property, if the Policy Genius experts find you a better rate, they'll get you switched for free. This service is completely free. If you own a car, Policy Genius can also compare your home and auto policies across different insurers and even mix and match them to maximize your savings. So if you're interested in saving money on your home, auto, or life insurance policies, because honestly, who isn't? Visit policygenius.com slash crafted workshop to shop the market and compare quotes. And big thanks again to Policy Genius for sponsoring this week's video. So after getting basically the first half of this first section sided, we went ahead and caulked all of those seams between the end of the siding and the trim boards. And I highly recommend doing this as you go. Since you already have your kind of walk board or ladder or scaffolding set up, it makes it much easier to go ahead and do this caulking and get it out of your way. Also, as I mentioned, we went ahead and tacked the corners of these boards with a finish nailer, and this just helps to keep a nice consistent gap between the front of that trim and the siding. And this was a tip I picked up from the Perkins Builder Brothers, and I think this is a really great tip for making your siding install look as clean as possible. So as we got to the top of the wall, we did need to go back and add one more piece of PVC trim. My plan is to add these kind of sliding barn door style privacy screens. And those privacy screens will slide in front of that really big sliding glass door on the front of this house. And the brackets for this barn door track need some place to mount. And this piece of PVC trim will be the perfect spot for that. So after getting that PVC trim installed, we could get the last row of siding installed. And we obviously needed to rip it to width. Now, luckily this was close to a full width piece of siding in our case. So we could just nail it in place. But if this ends up being a super narrow piece, in your case, you might wanna add some sort of spacer strip behind this last strip to make sure those angles match up and then that last piece doesn't look kinda funky. Also, as you'll see, we installed this last row with our siding nailer. But again, another tip I picked up from the Perkins Brothers was to use those finished nails on this last row so that those nail holes disappear. And they're really plenty strong enough for this one piece of siding. And it just looks a lot better in the finished install if you use a nail with a smaller head. 
After that last row was in place, we went ahead and caulked the seams between the upper trim and the vertical trim. And I should also mention that we used a combination of Weathermaster and Duramaster caulks here, both of which are made by Titebond. And Duramaster is an elastomeric water-based sealant, which means it'll stay flexible over time, but can also be cleaned up with water, making it a great choice for this kind of siding work. So I finished up caulking this area, and then we can move on to the next section of wall. So again, we used a line level to help us kind of move around these corners because you want to make sure all of your siding is running at a consistent level all the way around the house because otherwise it just kind of looks weird. Luckily, again, the bottom edge of our trim boards were nice and square and nice and level. So we could again use those as reference and just continue up this next wall in the same way, cutting a starter strip, fastening it in place, and then getting that first row installed. So on this wall, we did run into the first thing we needed to work around with the siding, and that was this hose bib. This was a pretty simple process. We went ahead and cut the board to length and got it positioned in place and then we can mark basically the edge of the mounting block for that hose bib and then cut out that area with the jigsaw and i did maintain that same 3 16 gap around the sides and bottom of this penetration again for expansion and contraction and so i can caulk in that area I went ahead and got it nailed to the wall in the exact same way and then i repeated the process for the next board which also needed to work around this hose bib you can see that we ended up with a really small sliver of this siding left on the upper edge of this penetration. And this is something that wouldn't have been really doable with fiber cement just because it's so brittle. And that is one bonus of this kind of LPE smart side product is you can make cuts like that and not have the board basically fall apart on you. Also on that top edge, we left about a three eighths of an inch gap above the flashing there. And that's a water that pools up there will not come into contact with that edge. From there, we just continued up to the bottom edge of the window, which is about as far as we got on this first day. And then the following day, the Perkins crew were on hand. So again, because these siding boards came in 16 foot lengths in my case, and all of my sections here were 12 feet or less, I had a lot of four foot offcuts, but this actually worked out really well because the lengths we needed next to these windows were almost exactly four feet. And this really just came down to a great design by our architect, Rick Caseby. We ended up with very little waste. And again, we do have plans available for this building if you're interested in building something like this yourself. And he really put a lot of thought into maximizing our efficiency so that one, we didn't send a lot of stuff to the landfill, but also it saves you a lot of money when you don't end up with a lot of waste. Once we got to the top of the window, it was the same process cutting around the top of that flashing and we just continued up this wall until we got to the kind of angled area of this gable end. Now cutting these boards can be a little bit tricky and I'm gonna let Eric explain his process for doing this. All right, we're to this board that's gonna bump into the gable part of the roof. So what we need to do is cut an angle that's gonna match the bottom of the soffit. That's the bit that's gonna have a vertical into the corner board and I need to make a line here to cut. So I'm gonna use the roof pitch, which is a 412 angle. So I'm gonna measure out 12 inches, the run, and I'm gonna put a mark the same height up as my vertical there, 5 8 and then I'm gonna measure up four inches from that. That's the rise in one foot. So in essence, I've just come over one foot and up four inches. That's the roof pitch. Connect those two points with a straight edge. And that should be the cut on the roof pitch. There are tools that will kind of help you do this without doing the math, like a big framing square with some locking nuts on it. You can set the angle, but that works pretty well. We'll go ahead and actually do something else here. Our lap is seven inches and this, this speed square is seven inches. So I'm gonna put a tick mark right there. And that's uh, where the end of the next point is gonna be. I'll mark both ends, measure between them. Then we don't have to get up on the ladder to make any measurements for the all, all the rest of the pieces going up, which is great. One oh two and five eighths will be long to long. The next one. Can I write that on your workbench? Sure. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> So we just continued cutting those angled pieces and installing them. And it did start to get really tight in this area. We only have a six inch overhang at the gable end of this house. So it got to the point where we couldn't fit the siding nailer or any nailer or even a hammer up into that space. And so for that very last piece of lap siding on this gable end, I had to get a little bit creative and somehow didn't get any footage of this, but basically ran a couple of screws from inside the house and that ended up working out really well. So from there, it was really just rinse and repeat around most of the rest of the house. And while the bottom of our trim boards were pretty much level throughout the entire house. There were a couple spots where we needed to make a little bit of an adjustment and we just made those level adjustments on the first couple of rows, just kind of cheating between level and the bottom of those trim boards. And that way, by the time those first two rows of siding were in, we were running level. 
So obviously there was a lot of stuff to work around on this back kind of center section on the house with all the windows and the electrical panel and the electrical outlet. We did have some pretty tiny slivers of siding between those corner boards and the windows, but luckily they were still wide enough to get those gecko gauges into. And so that was about as far as we got on day two of the siding install. And while it took Eddie and I a day to do one and a half sections, it took me and the Perkins crew a day to do five and a half sections. So things went a heck of a lot quicker with a couple extra hands. And Eric was nice enough to come back the following day to wrap up the siding on the rest of the house. And we started on the other end, which was again, a super simple section because there was nothing to work around. Once that was done, we needed to move into the area above where the deck is gonna be. And this area required a little bit more layout. And that was because we needed to leave a minimum of one inch between where the top of the one inch thick decking we're gonna be using will be and the bottom edge of the siding. And so once again, I called on the line laser to help me with this. And I made a few measurements to figure out the width for that first row on this section. And luckily this ended up basically working as our starter strip here. And I just installed these pieces with a few nails. Also, since the siding nailer and finish nailer were both in use, I ended up using a framing nailer here, but I would not recommend this because as you can see, that really buried those nail heads in these pieces. And so I actually went back and caulked those nail holes after the fact, just to make sure I never had any problems here. But anyway, once I had those first strips installed, I could go ahead and install the rest of the siding between the doors and the trim. And we basically just installed siding all the way to the top edge of the door trim. Also, one thing you might be noticing here is that we don't have any wall sconces or lights between these two doors where there typically would be one. And again, because of those sliding privacy screens, I ended up having to kind of ditch those. And instead I'm gonna be putting in some low profile LED kind of can lights up in that soffit area. And that's gonna function as my front porch lighting here. We also went ahead and installed those last couple of pieces of upper trim on the front section of the house. And then we could get those last couple of pieces of siding installed above those doors. We needed to add another one of those kind of strips above the door to maintain that same kind of angle across where that piece of siding ran above the doors. And we just used some ripped down pieces of treated material here and ripped those down so that the angle would match the previous rows. Okay, so now we're ready. Also, as I mentioned, we only had that one butt joint on this entire house, and that was right above this large sliding door. And luckily this piece was super simple to flash. I just cut an off cut of some of the other flashing I had on hand and tucked that behind where those two pieces of siding met up so that any water that ever works its way into that seam will be pushed down in this case onto the flashing above the door. Or if this was above another row of siding, it would push it on top of that row of siding below it. So with that, the siding installation was pretty much a wrap. I still have a couple spots that I still need to caulk here and there, but overall, I think the siding install turned out great and this thing is really starting to look like a finished house now. So I think that's gonna do it for this week's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that notification bell. Next week's video is gonna be on roughing in the mini splits inside the house, which is a little bit of an interesting process since this is new construction. So stay tuned for that. Also, I'll have links to all the tools and materials I use down in the video description below as always. And last, I also want to say a huge shout out to all of my YouTube members and my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. I'll have links to both of those here on the screen and in the video description below. All right, thanks for watching y'all and until next week, happy building.